the sky is like perfect blue and the sun is super bright today. And of course it's freezing again. Anyways, uh, I got lucky. I think he's gone though now. And uh, I don't think he's doing any switching anymore. I got lucky and he was passing through just as I was taking some pictures. So I thought I'd stop and take a video for you. Uh, hopefully I can catch him a little more later. Now I'm going to go over to my friend's house and we're going to go check out an end scale layout. Uh, he's a good friend of my cl in my club and he's got a whole basement full. So, come along with me. Madman. <laughs> Doing scenery. Tell us how you do it, Mark. Uh, layers and layers Paul. and layers and layers. You just keep adding to it, but. So this is, uh, I call this doing grass in a big way, quick. A big area. In a big area. Here. So, spray on a little uh, water with, mixing with detergent and uh, rubbing alcohol. And then I use the woodland scenic glue and I also use, I got a bucket of rare white glue with some rubbing alcohol mixed in. And just throw it down. Just throw it down. Don't get you fussy. Know? Don't get fussy, this is the initial coating. There you go. But I think the key <laughs> behind good scenery too is that your paint is painting. I use yeah. a lot of acrylics and I use a lot of variety of color. I see a lot of people like to use the latex. And I, uh, I used to use acrylic paint. It soaks in the plaster nice. And I throw a lot of browns and earth colors and grays and multiple colors. Multiple colors. Sure. Even though most of it gets covered with grass, you still see it underneath. You know what I think the key is to this. I think it's your hat. It's only minus nine now. <laughs> actually, what are we doing? It's actually about zero right now. It's what? warming up. It's a heat wave here in Wisconsin. <laughs> what do we do in Wisconsin when it gets cold? We go to our basement. So as you go down this way on his layout, you can see the scenery is building. I just did this scene. He let me do it. This was all just flat paint. He's still got a river to build yet, but that's the layer, the first layer. Layers. Layers. And then it ends up being like this. The other thing I find about uh, model railroading is if you don't like it, tear it out and do it again. Oh, yeah. And that many a times. Woodland Scenic, as simple as the stuff is, is a godsend to the industry. Yeah. When I first got into this, people used dried sawdust and the stuff kind of came out in the early 80s and it really holds nice to the white glue. It makes a dumb model railroader like me yeah, look like a good one. Yeah. I don't have to be creative and make it myself. Yeah. It's kind of like their glue. You and I were talking about. Just doing the white glue, which I have in here with some rubbing alcohol, but they're yep. one of the Scenex for ballasting in that. They have some acrylic in there, it spreads really nice. So, See, he's got ballast here, but he just reused an old can. He just uses that for the shaker. Yeah. So, layer number one, and then he throws a bunch of the other colors in, and he layers the other stuff in. That's kind of the base one, yeah. That's actually a bucket, kind of mixed up greens. So I'll kind of throw this in there. I'm going to get this kind of thick in here. Make it look like it's all dead. Mm, grass has got a lot of brown in it, especially yep. where all the cows are going to be. Yep. Get a little of this golden color in. Kind of highlights. Because some of this is going to splotch around when I spray it here in a second. Which is okay. And he locks it all in. You know, this will soak in. I'm going to sprinkle some more on here. So it'll soak down into the other glue and make it all it one. In. That's what the rubbing alcohol is kind of a key that yeah. breaks the friction. And That's what they say, it breaks the tension between the two. Now I'll sprinkle some more green on here. So yeah, you're right, that looks a little too browny, but. I like it. I kind of like it. Yeah. There's lots of dead grass all over the place. Especially in unmanaged areas. Yeah, you're right. Nope. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. 
Like I say, you know, I come back later and here, actually I got a little too much yellow in there. So how long have you some of the cornfields? What the heck? How long have you been model railroading? Well, I did it in high school. I had model railroad, model cars, but uh, after college, I built my first Enskill out in 1983. Wow. So. Did they have pre-made track back then? Yeah. Yeah, Atlas did, but they didn't have a lot of the scenery stuff. So. Did you have to do your own switches or no? Uh, I used the Atlas snap switches. Yeah. Yeah, Atlas has been at the Enskill. Since the 60s, I want to say. Yeah. My first level was one of those track plans, in those Atlas track plan books. Sure. That, of course, being who I What's his name? Had. Armstrong, right? No, no, no. The uh, Atlas comes out with these track plan books. Yeah. You know, they have an HO. Actually, my first HO layout was the Dog Bone Central, which is in that Atlas book they've had since the 60s. It's a little fold out thing. I used to love looking at that. Yeah. That I think they now made in a regular book. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. So that was my first layout in high school. It didn't run worth a darn. I think we all had our first layouts that way. Well, you kind know, of like my first layout. I had way too much packed in one little area. Back then, is you know, it's still not a cheap hobby, and when you're 15, 16 years old, you don't get so much money. So, well, plus everything's come around. I really wish they would have had some. You know the track they make now with the plastic? Yeah. The tracks for dinner? It's got the road bed built in. I remember in. that because I was into model cars, and the model cars had that, and I remember thinking, why don't they make a uh, train track like that? Right. Dang, now, but I should have came up with that idea. I could have made a fortune. <laughs> right, well, I had to... Uh, yeah. I had to read to Zorta, Desperate Measures. Yep. We had to resort to desperate measures. I had to pull my phone out. My other camera had died, so video quality might change from the last clip to this one. It'll be interesting to see the comparison. It's a big industry. Three tracks coming through here. He's got a little. He's got an unloader here. Kind of cool. So then we go through the wall there, and it comes out right here into this room again. Paul's still working on scenery. The hard part is going to be cleaning the track. <laughs> yeah. There's another uh, water party here. Oh boy, trying to keep this G-rated here so the kids can watch it. <laughs> See if we can both fit through here. Oh, we're perfect. Look at how he bent that backdrop. Did you have to wet that thing down? No. Just pure muscle fell. Wow. That's impressive. That's impressive for a guy that works at a bank. Yeah, we're talking. Attaboy. It was 10 miles on the bike today. And 600 step masters. One thing I do notice with my phone camera is that it doesn't do motion very well when I'm videotaping. Yeah, you gotta kind of do slow. Yeah, you gotta go way slow. It sucks, though. It sucks the space on your phone, dude. I have a 40 gigabyte card in it that all my videos go to. Right, you can't really keep them on there. Like, I got one. No. Now, let's see, when, they, when did I last download all my pictures in the computer? August, huh? Yeah. I, I got 2000. I'd have to look at my phone, but at least 2000 pictures. So now we're getting up to the scene that I did part of. It's amazing how much difference green comes. <laughs> yeah. Paul likes a lot of track. He likes a lot of industry. So we have a lot of operating options. 
can pack a lot in a little area with an end scale. It does derail more, but it, you gotta take a good one through that. Yeah. That's why I like being in a club, because I got the best of both worlds. Yeah. I think once uh, you get it all done, seen, and all your track done, I mean, you can still you can start, you know, tuning in the little spots that are problematic. Go back with. Uh, oh yeah, I've been replacing switches. Go back with a solder iron and you know smooth it out a little bit or do a little tweak this way or that. Well, thanks, Paul Helmer. <laughs>